Hello everyone, welcome to my Wallapini, aka my underground greenhouse. Today is January 1st, 2020, and I'm gonna give you a tour of my Wallapini. First, I need to warn you that even though the Wallapini was built over two years ago, it is still in the early stages of development. My goal this year is to make some solid improvements to the underground greenhouse so I can grow trees and plants year round. Be sure to click the subscribe button below to get updates throughout the year. Before I start the tour, let me tell you a little bit more about where I live. My Wallapini is located in Eagle Mountain, Utah. The elevation here is approximately 4,900 feet above sea level. Eagle Mountain is in the USDA hardiness zones 6A, 6B, and 7A. Before we step inside, I'll show you what we've done to the exterior. As you can see, we've carved out a section in the natural slope of our yard pouring concrete footings and foundation. Let me tell you something, that was a bill. Also, if I could do it again, I would have sloped the roof more. I'll talk more about that in a future video. If you look over here, we've added concrete steps leading down into the greenhouse. Let me tell you something, that was a bill. Then we ran power and a water line, which is attached to our sprinkler system under the foundation wall. That means we have year round power and water during the spring, summer, and fall. Now, let me show you the roof. Here's some video taken earlier when there was no snow so you can actually see what we've done. Okay, so you can see we've used these aluminum bands to come across the top here. Those are just kind of to help hold it down. And then the white part, this plastic piece you see kind of running this direction, that actually holds the two separate pieces of the poly together. And then if we zoom in a little closer here, you'll see here, these are self-tapping screws. So when you put them down there, they've already got the rubber on them. It keeps the um, water from seeping in. All right, the roof is made out of a material called polyethylene. Um, that's what you see here behind me. I'll give you a close-up uh, to kind of show you a little bit more what it is. Okay, so this is a close-up of the roofing material. You can see basically it's a two layers here, and the air can get caught up in between these little channels here, which helps keep the temperatures regulated a little bit better. And it comes in these giant rolls. And then you can see right here, this is another piece of aluminum flashing to kind of help hold the water down. So the poly runs underneath this piece here. And then you can see we bolted it down, once again with self-tapping screws. And then if you see right here, we've got these huge bolts. Um, so when we had them pour the cement foundation, we had them put bolts out so we could bolt this stuff down and help hold everything down a little bit better. Okay, so now you're looking at a solar attic vent. This was actually an afterthought when we realized the greenhouse was getting too hot in the summertime. So we've used this to help crank the hot air out. Just one last thing I want to talk about before I head into the greenhouse. What you see here is a power line coming out of the greenhouse. This is not the source coming into the greenhouse. We ran power and water underground into the greenhouse. This is for the outside because I thought it might be nice to have an outside outlet clear out here. So that's why we did that. Okay. Now let's talk about the foundation of the greenhouse. As you can see, we've built it into a naturally sloping hill. The hill slopes from the north to the south. If I could do it again, I would probably slope that roof even more. But you can see here, we put in two retaining walls to hold back the dirt. If you look here, you'll notice I put a little fence around the greenhouse. That's just to keep animals and people from walking over the top of it because they would just fall inside. Okay, so looking at the door, you'll see we've added a door with a window for airflow and stairs leading down into the greenhouse. 
I've placed buckets to catch the water coming off the roof. Today, the temperature outside is about 32 degrees. Let's step inside to see what the temperature is inside there. And then I'll tell you more about the greenhouse from the inside. All right, I've got the jacket off because it is a smoking hot 40 degrees inside here. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the greenhouse. So as you come inside the door, you'll notice there's some steps leading back up into the greenhouse. And if you look around here, you'll see there's, that's the footing that goes all the way around. And that comes down to this here. It's got a nice footing here. We've put a box here that we keep all the buckets in. This area right here is called a cold fill. Sorry, it's pretty dirty. I should have cleaned it first. But this area here, all the cold air comes from this part of the greenhouse and should come down and fall into this area, keeping the area up here where the plants are a little warmer. And then over here, you'll notice we've put a little, well, it's a horse trough, but we've put sand and things like that in there in the spring and summer when the kids catch creatures, they can keep the creatures in the greenhouse. If you look right here, you can see our water station. Uh, that is tied to the sprinkler system, so that will not give us water in the winter time. And then if you come down right here, you'll see we've got this section here, so we can time it with our sprinkler system if we want, but we have not set that up yet. Right here, I've got a bunch of plants that I purchased, some of them even a year or two ago, that I haven't been able to plant yet. And I just put them here in a big section together. These ones I put in a swimming pool so I can collect the moisture that drips from the roof. I'll show you that really quick. So if you look behind me here, you can see all the water on the roof. So it'll actually rain in here throughout the winter. So if I touch this, you can see it just drips like crazy. So uh, it becomes a little rainforest in the wintertime, which is pretty cool. So now let me show you some other exciting things we have going on down here in the greenhouse. Okay, so if you look behind me here, you see a row of trees. Those are actually citrus trees. Uh, I have not gotten oranges or anything to grow out of them, but I'm gonna tell you about each one of these little trees really quick. This one right here is actually a peach tree. And if you look down here, you'll notice it's still in a bucket. That means I'm gonna plant it outside when that chance comes. Now, if you come over here to this tree right here, this is my orange tree. It's my beloved orange tree. It's my champion. It's growing so well. And I'm hoping that this next spring here, I will actually get oranges off the tree. If you look right here, you'll notice there's a little flower growing on there, a little bloom. So normally that would turn into an orange, but I have a feeling it'll get a little too cold in here for anything good to happen there. So moving along here, we've got my grapefruit tree. This is actually something I picked up on sale at Walmart uh, at the end of the season for like four bucks. And it's been in the ground for a couple years. I'm kind of hoping that this one will start producing this next year as well. You can see it's got a pretty hefty little stock here on the base. Uh, this right here is another peach tree. And once again, if you come down here, you'll see that it's also in a bucket. And uh, this tree is going to go outside in the spring as well. Then right here, we have my other orange tree. And once again, this one's starting to take off, and if you look really closely here, you'll notice a little bloom forming. There's a couple of them. So my hope is in the spring, we'll start getting oranges off of this, okay? Coming over here, you've got my lemon tree. It's growing tall and skinny. It's doing pretty good. I'm, uh, once again, hopeful that we'll get some production out of these trees here. And then if you look right here, you have my crooked lime tree. I'm actually gonna flip the camera around to show you this crazy little tree. Okay, so this lime tree was actually my first tree to produce fruit, even though it was never quite edible. So if you look right here, you're gonna see this was an almost lime. I have a feeling this is not gonna survive. And you can see down here, there was actually one more. If you come down here, this tree was just growing so crooked and we've done everything we can to kind of straighten it out, but I'm afraid that's the best we're gonna do. So I fully expect this lime tree next year to give us fruit, so fingers crossed. Okay, so if you look up here, you'll see the underside of our attic fan meant to pull the hot air out of here in the summertime. If you come down here, you'll see a power outlet. It goes that way and that way to the main source. 
you can see it goes all the way around here to this main power box here. So we've got a lot of good power in here. And then of course it comes over here to the lights. Okay, so if you look behind me here, you can see two different colors of the wall. So this is just the normal cement that way. And then over here, we've painted it. This is the wall that faces north and that faces west and over here faces east. But what we're trying to do is collect that morning sun, the heat from it, and put that all the way around here. You can see to collect the heat and help keep it a little warmer here during the winter time. You can also see like this barrel right here and a barrel right here and a barrel in the corner over there. And I need about probably 20 more barrels to hold the temperature in here a little bit better. Or I can look into some other things like putting a little fish pond in here. I've considered coming over here and getting all this stuff out of the cold fill area and putting a fish pond down in here. I think that would be really, really productive. So that is something I'm considering doing, but um, you know, obviously that's gonna come with a hefty cost. And then to show you the roof a little bit better, you can see these steel beams here. We've nailed supports on both sides to help hold the weight of the roof. And you can see this goes all the way across. When these trees right here, like you see the orange tree here, in the spring I'll come and trim off the top there. That way we can uh, let the tree thicken up and not get too tall. But you can see here, these beams come all the way across the roof. And once again, they come into this section here, which we've nailed into the concrete foundation wall. All right, coming back to the watering station, which isn't functioning right now in the wintertime because we have the water turned off. You can see a hose running down this side, the green one. That's just a normal hose and that comes over here and that waters these plants with a sprinkler head. Then if you look on this side, you can see a drip line and that comes down all the way over here. And you see I've got two buckets here. In the spring and summer, I had some lily koi plants in here, but because they're tropical plants, I moved them inside for the winter. If you follow it around here, you can see the drip line comes in here to the different trees. And so I don't have to be in here watering the trees all year round. You'll also notice that this is the natural soil. It's pretty sandy by nature and it's got kind of like, you know, a lot of rocks in it and stuff. So I have put some nicer, richer soil down in here. And every once in a while, I need to come in here and pull some weeds. So even in the greenhouse, I get to pull weeds. So one of the things I love about the greenhouse is I really like to experiment with stuff. So I have no clue if these will produce fruit. I really believe that they will at some point, but I do a lot of fun things in here. Like I've got a little cactus growing here. I actually have two of them. Um, I don't know why. I mean, what am I gonna do with a cactus? But it's just fun to experiment with different things. I mean, you can see over here, you know, we're in the middle of winter time and I've got some beautiful little roses growing. So we're close. This, this greenhouse is really close to where I want it to be, but I really need to figure out how to keep it warmer in the winter time in here. And so I've been researching some ways to do that. I'll spend some time this year probably visiting other greenhouses in the area. And I probably will bring in some professionals if I can, or some people who know a little bit better than I do what to do to get their opinions. So just, you know, keep with me, keep watching my videos and watch me and my greenhouse as we both learn and grow and get better. Well, I guess a greenhouse doesn't really learn, but I really hope that you'll join me on this journey as we watch this greenhouse improve and get better over time. And I would love, love, love to hear your opinions if you have some great ideas or some experiments I should try. I'm all for it. So please write your messages below and let me know. Also, please, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button below and give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. I would appreciate that more than you know. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. All right, and before we bring this video to a close, I wanna show you one of my kids' favorite tricks. If you watch this, watch the water up on the ceiling, it will actually rain in here when I close this door really hard. And it is really cold water today, so. Anyways, thank you for watching.